Welcome to Digital E, the podcast for healthcare marketers where we look at the digital news, tools, tips, and tricks for effective healthcare communications. I'm David Schifrin with Gerard Phillips, Kate, and Hancock, and I'm with Lee Acey, digital healthcare pioneer and now healthcare entrepreneur. Today, we're looking at digitally enhanced healthcare, alternatives to Twitter, and healthcare leaders building trust through social media. So the headline that we're going to be talking about this week, the news story is titled, it's from Hims. Uh, healthcare IT news, and it says, like banks, healthcare will become digital first in 2022. And there's a comma, and the rest of the title is Zoom Healthcare Lead Says. So, Lee, I, I saw this and thought, there's a headline I have seen in some form or fashion probably every four months for as long as I've been doing this, which hasn't been that long, but it's been more than 2022. Mm -hmm. And it even starts with digital transformation is the topic du jour in healthcare today. So we're all talking about it and Mm -hmm. everybody's talking about the digital front door and care delivery being pursued through digital means and hospital at home and all the rest. Is 2022 really (laughs) the, (laughs) the point at which Healthcare goes digital first, or is this the optimistic view of a guy from Zoom who has a vested interest in that being true? Stock options and stuff, right? <laughs> and stop trying to boost things yeah. after things have come back down to earth after the pandemic. The pandemic yeah, bounce. exactly. Well, so so I think digital first is overstating it. That I think digital first is yeah, it is that thing that that, that a Zoomer would say. I think it's there's no doubt that I mean, with COVID, digital has made huge strides. That's just clear back when I was working at Mayo Clinic, we had some goals for digital going into 2020. And then it was astonishing how quickly things moved because they had to. Necessity being the mother of invention, the offspring were uh, a whole bunch of innovations that really were made a, made a difference. I think uh, the way reimbursements have changed or, or did change at least during, during COVID to say that you didn't have to be face-to-face to get reimbursed at a reasonable level. And so because of that, it made the telemedicine, made the virtual care much more attractive, much more viable, just economically viable for, for organizations. I would like to say digitally enhanced is the way of 2022 and, and hopefully beyond, because I think, um, I think it needs to be human first. So the analogy that uh, was used in this article was about banks, okay? People care yeah. about their bank. People care about their money, okay? Not as much as their health, and it's not as personal to them. Banking is much more transactional, and for I just deposited a check with my mobile app, and that's perfect. Mm-hmm. And like the whole thing about not just before we were on today. Um, ATMs used to be the big thing. Wow, you don't even have to stand in line and at the teller. I mean, so that the, the convenience of that, and that's what it really has to be all about. Is it for the patient's convenience? Is it for the good of the patient? Or is it just to drive profitability and make it more efficient for providers? So I think from my perspective, I know in a future episode, we'll talk about the other little venture that I'm working on right now personally. Yeah. But really with that, we're wanting to establish that human relationship and then use digital where it makes sense for the patients. If it makes sense to do a phone call or a video visit because it would be inconvenient to bring the kids in for to be seen, um, then yeah. But we don't want to say, if you want your lab results, you need to log into the portal and here are the instructions to how to do that. No, you can actually talk to a nurse. <laughs> we'll all be glad to talk, or your doctor will we'll talk to you. So I think digital can be a can and will be a huge enabler um, and can create some huge efficiency. In fact, a lot of the stuff that we're doing with this new clinic that I'm helping my uh, good friend start, my physician friend start, a lot of what we're doing wouldn't have been possible without digital. Just in terms of being able to get this going, having an electronic medical record that is cloud-based and that we like don't have to have the huge IT expenses, it's pretty astonishing what digital can make happen. But if that becomes first, digital first is a buzzword. And that's what the HIMSS guys and the and the Zoom guys are going to go for. But if we lose sight of the human relationship, then, and if it becomes not just not a means to the end of more satisfied patients, then we'll be missing the mark. Uh, 
Uh, let's let's take a look at the platform of the or platforms of the week. And in the notes I sent over, it said parlor, but as you've pointed out before, there's a bunch of these. Mm-hmm. Um, and we've had a, we've had some some folks ask about quote unquote that Twitter alternative, which we assume to be parlor, but that could just be a catch all for things mm-hmm. that aren't the the Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Yep. Um, <clears throat> with a lot of these, and we talked about this in the previous episode, these are coming about because people feel like they don't have a place to talk about issues that matter to them. So they are highly politicized and, and parlor in particular and tend to cater to specific uh, mm-hmm. political segments. And that also does feed into, I think, to an extent into more of a, a mistrust of institutions, of healthcare. I don't know if you want to say anti-establishment, but that uh, mm-hmm. potentially that's there yeah. too. So, you know, as you look at all, all these upstart platforms because at one point Twitter was an upstart and Facebook was and everything else RIP MySpace do you see any indication that these are places that healthcare providers should be getting involved in there's yeah. a flash in the pan what are you thinking about I would suggest this is a to use the medical term it's a watchful waiting approach that you would uh, apply here but also I'd start by listening you can create an account personally if you're a healthcare marketer or communicator get familiar with what's happening there you don't have to speak you don't have to you can be one of the lurkers and just see what people are saying and maybe try some experiments if you think it makes sense but I think um Not paying attention to them at all is the wrong approach. But I also think given the tenor uh, that will likely be there in most of these platforms, running out there with a whole bunch of establishment kind of messages, you're probably getting the equivalent of ratioed there (laughs) on uh, on those those platforms too. So, But I do think it's like, you know, in in politics, you have to get 50% plus one. Marketers are all about tenths of a percent of market share at the lower end of things and making a big difference in their bottom line by how well they're reaching people. And so unless you want to say that this segment of the population is just, we just shouldn't, don't even want to treat their kind, you know, then you should be paying attention. You should at least be hearing what they're saying and seeing if there's a way that you could effectively communicate there. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't rush into it and say, okay, everybody has to have a rumble page a rumble channel and put all their videos on rumble too but i think not at least listening is you know making the problem worse okay all right last one uh the tip let's uh, we've talked about social media policies and let's talk here more specifically about good ways for leadership as individuals to use social media. How do folks in leadership positions in the executive suite build trust and credibility and come across as real people while also presenting valuable information about the brand or the organization as they need to? And and I mentioned before we started recording that I'd I'd love to continue on this thread at some point about how, how almost the flip side of that is how brands can leverage the corporate voice versus the the individual voice. But let's start sort of, if you're a healthcare leader, how do you balance that and come across as a, as a real person? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think um, healthcare leaders who are going to be, have personal accounts on social media need to be engaged with them, need to be paying attention to them. There's certainly any public figure who has a social media account is having other people help manage the account just because there's sure. such a volume of messages. But it needs to come across as authentic and that there needs to be some some level of the person himself or herself speaking and engaging. And that if it's all if it's all managed and not an individual being involved at all, it's not going to be genuine is not going to feel genuine and real and i think that's part of what people are thirsting for is is that there would be that ability to that this is a a real person who personifies the brand who personifies the values of the organization so i think one way i mean a lot of that can be accomplished through video by having just the ceo or other leader talking about things but i would say much more like a live stream and ask me anything kind of thing versus a highly produced thing with drone footage, you know, where they're, (laughs) they're coming in to to, swooping into the swooping into a CEO suite. It's like, yeah, (laughs) I mean, 
I understand there are different brands that have different feels. And for some, that might be just the, like maybe for Elon Musk. Well, I mean, just let's think like Elon Musk, okay? Yeah. I mean, a good example of of someone who you're pretty sure that that's um, authentic to who he is. And he's done okay for himself, mostly. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it would be hard to go straight for yeah, Elon Musk. Exactly. He has his own style. It's a great example because it, it does show, and, and he does say some things that you go, really? Wow, bro. But mm-hmm. he, as you say, he is incredibly successful and he has built real products and he has advanced his brand. So it does show that people are interested in the human behind the brand. Mm-hmm. And in some cases they might be inextricable, but um, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Mm-hmm. Okay. There you go. So that's that's what I have to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, Lee. All right. <laughs>